eSwift Bank recently announced its full year 2023 earnings, so let's get into it. We'll look at the report in three parts. First, high-level results. Second, revenue. Three, cost perspective. On the high level, the company earned $1.2 billion in 2023, over a market cap of about $10 billion at year end. The bank bought back 1.5 million shares in the fourth quarter for $82 million, which is about 54 67 per share, or roughly 1% of the company. This was communicated in the previous quarter that they had restated the buyback, and it is good to see that they were both aggressive and conservative at the same time. They deployed about one-third of their authorization, and they held off acquiring more shares as share price increases. Hence, it is likely that they made their purchase in October to November timeframe, which shows that Management believed the stock was undervalued under the $60 range and bought hand over fist, which coincided with what Li Lu probably bought when he first disclosed his mistake in 2023. Hence, you can assume that this buyback was, has increased the intrinsic value despite paying about 10% over book value. All right, on the revenue side of the business, here are the three parts that we'll examine. One, loan growth. Two, net in interest income, the spread between what they take in as deposits and what they lend out. And three, non-interest incomes, coming from fees and wealth management services. Banks make their money by making loans, and East West Bank is no different. It loaned out $52.2 billion at year end, and in Q4, made an additional 1.3 to 1.44 billion in loans. This grew by 8% year over year. What is somewhat comforting is that they didn't really grow loans in the commercial real estate segment, which is the current problem child in the industry in the fourth quarter. It increased it by 98 million, which is essentially flat. And the same earnings call, Magic confirms that the loans for offices has declined, meaning less exposure for overall uh, commercial real estate increase. Office is the segment that is currently most under distress. It is the largest segment, and rightly so, as commercial real estate is predominantly the bread and butter of regional banks. Net interest income totaled $575 million in the fourth quarter, an increase of 1% from 571% in the third quarter. Net interest margin, or NIM, was 3.48% unchanged from the third quarter. This is great to see that NIM has stabilized despite a continual shift of deposits to CDs, though the company did guide towards a continual depression prior and also into the future for the first half, especially in the latest six month CSD specials that pays 5.25% for six months. And this 5.25% will remain profitable as the average loan yield at the bank sits at 6.61%. So it will compress uh, the net interest income. <clears throat> oh, sorry, net interest margins. On non interest income, the bank stood about 80 million on the fourth quarter, up about 65 million from the year prior. On a year over year basis, we can see that increase predominantly came from lending fees, Forex, and wealth management, accounting for uh, seven million of the gap. The other half comes from sales of maturities, securities, as well as recovery of impaired debt securities of a failed bank. And it's nice that the substantial part of the portion is increasing by a little over 10% year on year. All right, from a cost perspective, it is not surprising the largest cost item is interest expense. Interest expense increase as overall deposit increase. Overall, in Q4, interest expense increased to 415.5 million, up from 390.9 million in the previous quarter, increasing 6.3% quarter on quarter and 166.9% year on year. This predominantly caused by an increase of shift to time deposits. The good news is that they have decreased for 95 million in the wholesale funding that cost them 5 to 6% while growing consumers, commercials, and greater China segment by about $1 billion in the past quarter. Overall, the cost of deposit is 2.6% in Q4. We expect this to increase in the next quarter as they're running a CD promo for 6% for five 
than the quarter and 5% for 12 months, which will likely cause interest expense to increase as new funds come in. However, I suspect this is part of the plan to refinance the Bank Term Funding Program, the BTFP, that was announced last year. The pricing in the program is secured uh, overnight funding rate plus 10 basis points, which currently sits at 5.32%. The cost of fund will will uh, the cost of fund will will be relieved five point a quarter as the pot will likely renew or keep it at the bank after the promotion offer has ended. We said they can continue to be offered at a lower rate. This is particular to note as the loan deposit ratio at the bank is in the nineties, so the bank doesn't have much room. Uh, to grow his loan book until more deposit comes at, comes in. Another expense is credit quality. It is the leading indicator of unrealized losses on the book. Overall, that charge off is 0.15% or $20 million. Overall, non-performing assets sits at around $114 million, up $14 million year on year, but, the, but flat as a percentage of total assets at 0.16%. Moreover, there is a slight improvement in overall credit quality quarter over quarter, which is a good sign. They have reserved 2.43% of all office loans and 1.28% of all total loans. This is important because, as I said before, office is a problem child right now. They have about $2.3 billion in office exposure with a loan to value of average of 552%. The areas that we're most concerned about will be in San Francisco, downtown LA, and Manhattan as vacations and vacancies in these urban centers have sharply increased. The good news is that the problem amount areas to about 13% of their office portfolios, which is roughly $300 million. Hence, the property valuation and origination is probably around $577 million. Valuation is a stress at the moment, so if we take a 70% haircut, meaning that if we de- should it default, the property can only recover 30% of its original value, we can expect recovery of 173%, $173 million. That they reserve roughly 56 million, 56 million already, hence we'll have about 230 million. It's possible that there still be some impairment. Though another positive aspect to East West Bank portfolio is that not all these loans are actually non recourse. They have personal guarantees, suggesting that they are able to recover more should the property sell below the loan value. Oh, and one more thing Dominic, the CEO, once again remind analysts that. Quote, we don't have many loans mature. Well, neither in 2023 nor in 2024. There's a very small potential of loans coming due, end quote. This will put ele- elevated refinancing, refinancing fears to rest as a lot of borrowers in the CRE space, how much of financing without your name, so non recourse to speak, will determine the valuation and where the borrower will walk away or keep the property. In short, the exposure is very manageable, with LTV around 52%, of which 13% is more at risk. With limited maturity in 2024 and 2025, we can expect borrowers to stay in fact. And before I forget about the 42% of the loans that are fixed rates and 57% that are variable, 46% of the customers also have uh, interest rate hedges. So the real interest rate risk here is actually quite small. So the problem is at least two years out and could change should the market work out itself. The expense for the bank will likely increase as properly de- declined for the first half of 2024. This is in part because of higher interest expense, potentially higher charge-offs, and higher operating costs in terms of compensation benefits, with the benefits coming back in the second half of the year. So <clears throat> overall, I like the company. It was both aggressive in buying back stock under the 60s, buying 1% of the company back within a month. Moreover, the companies probably will likely remain on track as it continue to generate deposits that will allow it to continue to f- fund loans. They have shown that th- they have taken proactive measures to ensure their ability to do business, and it's likely that they will either swap out of higher f- cost funding channels like wholesale deposits this year, or uh, refinance or pay back all of the BTFF, the BTFP in March, or choose to earn more money by lending to their customer. No matter what, the deposits that they are generating will pay off in the long run. Oh, and the bump in dividends that we saw was a nice touch. Now, I would prefer if they have allocated more of that money into buybacks, but we can understand that they are also catering to a different uh, income generating shareholders. All right, hope you enjoy this. Remember to 
to click like and subscribe.